thank you for joining us this morning. I'm sure you've got a big smile on your face, not least listening to Jackie and Ian squabble as ever. Um, <laughs> firstly, uh, your reaction to, to what's happened for your party this evening? Oh, these are groundbreaking results for the Liberal Democrats. They're exceeding the expectations of the independent pundits. Uh, and, you know, for example, it looks like we're going to take control of the uh, of, of Windsor and, and Maidenhead uh, in rural Berkshire. That is just fantastic. I'm hearing we've won a ward called Castle and Eton with a 22 percent swing from the Conservatives to the Liberal Democrats. And across the country, you know, in counties like Devon, in Surrey, in Hertfordshire, in Oxfordshire, uh, we, we look like we are the main beneficiaries. The blue wall that we've been banging against has really crumbled. Uh, and Liberal Democrats, yes, we do have a smile on our faces today. How much is that based on the Liberal Democrats' uh, national perspective, though? Uh, because obviously you've got an eye on the next election and want to translate those results to that. And how much is it on local issues? You know, areas like, for instance, Windsor and Maidenhead, some of those places in Oxfordshire, were very influenced by the, um, the allocation of building homes, for instance, in those areas. They were unhappy with the Conservative Council suddenly building homes because of the Conservative government's instruction. So things like that, and also environmental issues in certain places, have affected some of those results, haven't they? Well, there are always local issues, and that's right in local elections. But I have to say, when I've been on the doorsteps all around the country, um, a lot of national issues have been raised by voters, um, particularly the health service, the cost of living. Um, people have liked what we've been saying in terms of getting more GPs, dealing with the ambulance delays, and they've been very, very angry with the Conservatives. And the other thing about the Conservatives that they bring up on the doorstep, unprompted, is they feel they've lost integrity, uh, that they've been incompetent, chaotic, but they don't trust them anymore. They think they're dishonest. Uh, and I think that charge sheet against the Conservatives is something that's going to hit them all the way through to the general election. Uh, I'm just proud of our positive campaigns, though. I mean, for example, sewage. We, we were the first party to raise the outrageous uh, failure of the Conservative MPs to vote against water companies pumping their filthy sewage into our rivers and seas. We've raised that campaign for two years, and we're finding that that's what local people feel as well. So there are national and local issues that, that I think explain the Liberal Democrat success. So the success uh, is, is on your face. We can see that. And, um, you know, clearly your, your councillors and, and local uh, parties have been working very hard. The translation to the general election is going to be the next challenge for you, though, isn't it, uh, Ed Davey? Because, of course, we've seen you perform well in local elections in the past uh, and, of course, not managed to sort of get over the line in the general election. How are you going to do that? How are you going to sort of ensure that these people that have decided that they want Liberal Democrats at the heart of their local uh, councils, that they need their MPs to be Liberal Democrats as well? Well, if you look at the history, uh, almost every single Liberal Democrat MP in the last 20, 30 years got elected on the basis of having done really well at the local government level uh, in terms of that success and showing people what we can do if you elect us. So I'm re I really believe that this huge success that we're having today and indeed had last year uh, shows that we're ready for the general election and can take seats off the Conservatives. And particularly across the blue wall that I've been talking about, uh, Tory heartlands, you know, we showed in those Palmetry by-elections, didn't we, in, in Buckinghamshire, in Cheshire and Amersham, in North Shropshire, seat the Tories have held for 200 years in, in East Devon, in Tiverton, Honiton, that we could beat Conservative MPs in their heartlands. And now we have not just one set of local elections, but two sets of local elections where it's been Liberal Democrats making the most gains in those Tory heartlands, in seats that the Tories have to lose mm. to be thrown out of government. So, you know, in many parts of the country, if you want to get rid of Conservative MPs in the next general election, it'll be the Liberal Democrats who are the powerful vote. So, uh, again, talking about the election, we have Colin Rallings. You'll be very aware of, of him, I'm sure. And he was talking about uh, where the Liberal Democrats have done well against the Tories. Often there's not been a Labour threat in that area. Two questions, really. Would you consider some kind of alliance with Labour? And is your main focus, really, get the Conservatives out? Well, there are no Paxil deals at, at, at all. And I should point out that we've made gains against Labour in places like Hull and Newcastle. Uh, so, you know, we, we do take on Labour where they are, the incumbents. But, you know, the Conservatives are the government, aren't they? Uh, and they've been performing so badly. They, you know, people on the doorstep tell me that 
in, these are lifelong Conservatives, by the way. They say it's as if the Conservatives don't care anymore, uh, that they've been appalled by the lack of integrity, by the chaos, uh, and they feel the Conservatives have lost their way and are out of touch. Mm. And they see in their local areas really strong Liberal Democrat champions who've been, who've been councillors or are campaigning on the issues they care about, which could be local, often a national. And they're seeing that the Liberal Democrats are the ones to, who, can, who can beat the Conservatives. So, you know, I'm, I'm obviously ecstatic about these results. They are absolutely fabulous. And, you know, we've got more to come. Um, but I think it sets the Liberal Democrats in a great place for the next general election uh, on those issues. Uh, can we just, just one briefly uh, on the question that we started as we came in, because Ian and Jackie were bickering so beautifully, about voter ID at the polling stations. It seems like we've got a, one or two of our viewers getting in touch saying they've really struggled. I wonder what anecdotally your, your reaction has been to that. Is that something, is voter ID for voting, is that something the Liberal Democrats are going to continue to try and sort of stand against? Or is it something you think actually, do you know what, it's, it's, it's going to be an important part going forward in elections? No, Liberal Democrats are totally against it. We voted against it and we will campaign against it. You know, we do have anecdotal evidence in a number of uh, places around the country where people didn't vote because they turned up and didn't have the right ID. Um, I think the way the Conservatives have gone about this is, is truly scandalous, actually. You know, for example, they've allowed, uh, in, in, the, in the rules, they've allowed uh, pensioners to use their their bus passes, and it seems from what you were saying, they're not, not everywhere, but the rules are, uh, actually allow it, but not young people mm. to use their bus passes. So, you know, I, I don't know what Ian Dell and, and Conservatives are going to say about that, but I, I just think that is outrageous abuse of our mm. democracy. There's, as Jackie Smith was saying, there's no evidence for this whatsoever. The Independent Electoral Commission are deeply worried about it, and the evidence we've seen, it may not have changed the results of lots of places, but that doesn't matter. Okay. People should yeah. be able to vote. Yeah. And when they turn up their polling stations, they make that effort. The idea that they are refused the right to vote is quite outrageous. OK. Uh, Ed, Dave, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you very much for joining us this thank morning. Thank you very much indeed.